Hello. Today I'll be talking about radical expressions, which are expressions with roots in them. Now, whatever number this is, up in the top left-hand corner of the root is called the index, and whatever's inside it's called the radicand. Now, usually when we have square roots, we don't write the two up here, but that's implied, all right? Because we're looking for two things that multiply to give us 16. So another way of writing that would be square root of 16. Uh, you don't need the two up top, but you can write it. Square root of 16 is 4. Um, another thing you need to know is when you have a fraction exponent, it's exponent divided by the root. So for example, say we have 3 to the 4 thirds. 4 is our exponent, and 3 is our root. So we have the cube root of 3, which is the base here, to the 4th power. Say we have x to the 5 halves. We have the square root. You don't really need to write the 2 of x to the 5th power. So you do not need that. But you can write it. All right. So a couple easy examples. Say we have the cube root of negative 64. Whatever this number is, that's how many you need to multiply to equal this. So what times what times what that's the same number as negative 64? Well, that's negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. Here, we have the square root of negative 64. Well, we can't have the square root of a negative because two negatives multiply to, give, multiply to give you a positive, and two positives multiply to give you a positive. So this does not exist. It's imaginary, which we don't get into in this class. All right, next, say we have the fifth root of negative 1 over 32. All right, so since it's a fifth root, we're allowed to have a negative, and we're going to get a negative answer. We're looking for five things that multiply to equal 1 over 32. Well, you could break this up. The fifth root of 1 over the fifth root of 32, which is not bad. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. And 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. So our answer for this would be negative 1 half. Because negative 1 half times itself 5 times is that. All right, now we're going to throw some letters in there. We know the square root of 36, that's just 6. But the square root of x squared, well, what times what equals x squared? We know that is x. But if x is a positive or a negative number, this is not exactly true. Because if you square it, it's always going to be positive. So what we write is absolute value symbols around the x. Whenever we have the square root, cube root, any root of an even exponent. Moving on. So here, we have negative, fifth root of negative 100,000. Well, the fifth root of 100,000 is 10. So that's negative, negative 10, which is just 10, since there's two negatives. Here, same case as this. We have the square root squared. So we know whatever comes out here, it's going to be positive. So you could write it like this. We're looking for what times what equals 7c squared. We know that's 7c times 7c. 7 can be out or inside of the absolute value. This one's a little bit different. We're going to have to factor to simplify it. So first thing we want to do is take out the greatest common factor. So GCF first. We take out a 4. If we take out a 4, we have x squared plus 8x plus 4. Oh, I'm sorry. x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then we can factor this. So we have the square root of 4 times. Two numbers that multiply to equal 1 that add up to 2 are 1 and 1. So we would have x plus 1 times x plus 1, but that's just the same as x plus 1 squared. Then we can simplify this just a little bit more. The square root of 4 is 2. And since we're squaring a, a squared um, set of things, we use absolute values, x plus 1. Remember, if you square, square
square root something in the square and the actual values. So that's just going to be just like that. Alright, next, uh, you need to know how to convert a radical to an exponent and vice versa. So, first example, say we have x to the 1 6th power. So, remember it's exponent over root, so our exponent is 1 and our root or radical is 6, our, our index. So, we could just say 6 to the uh, sixth root of x to the first power, but you don't really need the first power, so that would be it. It also helps us to simplify stuff like this. This is the fourth root of 81 to the first power, meaning what times what times what times what is 81, and we know that's 3. AB to the 1 half power, well, we know we would have the square root of AB to the first. You don't really need this one here, and we know if it's a square root, then we usually write it without the index. Next one. First, you want to convert this uh, because you can simplify it after. So we look at our exponent and our root, so it's the square root of all of this, 25x to the fourth, uh, cubed. You can simplify this. Um, 25 cubed, 625 times another 25, we'll just leave as 25 cubed. We'll not simplify that right now. And then x to the fourth cubed is x to the twelfth. Now you could do more with that. You could leave it like this. Um, I will be teaching you how to simplify this in one of the next videos, but we'll get there. Next, going backwards. Say we want to convert uh, a radical to an exponent. So here we would have 20. And here our exponent is on top over the root. Exponents 1 over root is 3. So we could just say 20 to the 1 3rd power. Same thing here. Here our exponent is 3 and our root, if there's nothing there, we know is 2. So this would be 3mn to the 3 over 2. Keep going. Here, we could say just the inside, because this is still an exponent and this is still a root. We have 8x squared y uh, to the 5 divided by 7. Exponent over root. Last one, we have 2x over, and this is two steps z to the exponent over root, so 2 over 3, and another way you could write that is to move the z up top, so you could say 2xz to the negative. Whenever you flip an exponent, you make it negative. Usually you flip it to make it positive, but this also works, just to show you what else you can do with it. But this would be the preferred answer. Okay, and last thing I'll be talking about for today, uh, finding the domain of a square root function. All right, so we know under the root has to be positive because we're not allowed to have a square root of a negative. Can't have a negative under a square root negative number. Um, so here, best way to do it is look at a number line. Now we know we are allowed to have zero. So whatever number makes this zero, that's going to be kind of our starting point. We know what number minus three is zero, three minus three is zero. 
So that would be a filled in circle. Since you're allowed to plug in three, but you're not allowed to plug in anything that'll make it negative. So say you plugged in two, two minus three would be negative. So none of this would be filled in, but it would be everything to positive infinity. Now there's two ways of writing it. We could either write interval notation or set notation. Interval notation would be a bracket because bracket means closed circles from 3 to infinity on and on because those are the numbers you plug in. Set notation would be x exists everywhere where x is greater than or equal to 3. So for this next one, it's kind of opposite. We have the square root of 3 minus x. We know 3 will still make that 0, which is okay. But if we plug in 4, 3 minus 4 gives us a negative. So it's really everything this way this time. So our two notations would be coming from negative infinity, going to 3 and stopping. So we could say negative infinity to 3 with a bracket, since it's included. Or you could say x, where x is everything less than or equal to 3. Last one, you really have to think about, because it, you can make this 0 with two x values. You can plug in 3, because 3 squared is 9. And you can plug in negative 3, because negative 3 squared is also 9. If you plug in 0, you got a positive under here. That's okay. So we know everything in here is okay. But if you plug in 4 or negative 4, this number is bigger than 9. So it's going to give you a negative under the square root. So two ways you can write it. Negative 3 to 3 with brackets. Or x, where x is between negative 3 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. And that's all I have for today.